Okay now, are you with me? This could be, this is a bit personal, but I'll do my best to, um, do my best to keep it a blessing for all of us. Now, I've just been helping my ex-wife plant uh, a lemonade bush. Uh, it produces, not quite lemons, they're lemonades which are sweet enough to juice as they are. And they're, they're a lovely, um, lovely fruit that New Zealand, I didn't find them in England because they don't do citrus there. And um, I've given her the bush from the house that I had it in before I had to, before I moved, you know. And um, of course she had not got around to putting it in, but she does it extremely well when she does put a tree in. She digs the deep, deepest hole you could imagine. I mean, it's something like a, uh, it's not a meter, it's a meter. It's, it's very deep anyway. And she puts loads of um, compost stuff in first. And um, she had this special tool that's very good for digging it. Um, it you just drop it into the ground and, and it grabs a piece of earth so you can break through turfs and so on. But anyway, that's not the point. What was the point was that A, I was doing it with a fora, fora and with her, and she was still in her dressing gown, so, you know, I was basically doing it, although she actually did quite a bit. Um, and she's a little soul. I mean, I haven't been close to uh, distance-wise for some time, and, and I was struck by just how short she is compared to, I'm six foot, three or four, and uh, she's certainly under five foot, four foot, ten, I suppose. And, um, I can see why some people were horrified when we were first married, you know. Well, not first married, but yeah, we, got, we were married fast, but um, yeah. But anyway, the, the important thing was the loveliness. And I felt God said to me, because I wasn't sure in my heart, you see. I mean, I knew I love her, but, but I, I saw a softness in her. I mean, she just, can see a look in her face that reminds you of how much she's loved you in the past and she's a bit concerned about me doing the work because she's worried about the back I mean that's what she's expressing several times and um, you realize ah, God could change it yesterday when he chooses and he will it just quickened me it was a blessing from God to be doing it with her, I just felt, ah, I still love her, I know I still love her. I mean, in a sense, I knew I still loved her, and, 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 and you know that it felt you ought to love her as well, and that confuses the issue, doesn't it? He just showed me, no, you still love her, and she could love you. I, 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 I don't mean it, but I just felt I could wait on God to see, I could, I'll trust him for it, I'll trust him for it. It happens, that it can happen, as easy as that. And that it might not happen, well fair enough, but I'm, I'm, if you like, I'm so much more hopeful now. And I don't want to be so hopeful that I run the risk of, gosh, I'm in close to tears now. I don't want to run the risk of being upset again. Because you're not, sure in yourself you can get out of such unhappiness so there's a slight guarding in the back of my mind or something like it but on the other hand wow I do so feel God is showing me something something that's well important important to me important to him, important to Christine, and when you think of it, important to Aria too, our little girl, who is, you know, with me five nights a fortnight, and mum nine nights a fortnight. It's a chap itching here, but I'm, but I'm not going anything like as far as he wants. I don't think I'm going to be any help to him, he'll just be dumped on the road if I pick him up fast traffic road is better here by the roundabout. Someone who knows her at least going to Tiamu too, which is, I don't know, 20k away, something like that. Okay, so yes, what a lovely time. And it was quite a heavy job, but not too bad. Uh, very good tools she's got for sort of um, 
it reminded me of a pile driver in that you sort of just let the weight of it drop and it goes into the turf or the earth and then you open the handles and it grips the earth that it's clasping and uh, you lift it up. It's quite a weight when you lift it up of course, um, not particularly because of the weight of the earth in it, there's not that much earth it's holding, but the weight of the tool itself. In fact, the weight of the tool itself drives it into the ground. And um, it's very good, she bought that, and uh, her last boyfriend uh, directed her to that, and some whom she doesn't see now. Well, very rarely she said anyway. But, yep, yeah. it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, it's one of those incredibly clear, it's the 1st of June, winter days in New Zealand, and uh, you get absolutely perfectly clear, lovely sunny days. You can sunbathe, and I do, and, um, and yet at night of course, assuming the cloud cover doesn't come in, the temperature can drop and it's going to drop to 2 degrees tonight, which is pretty cold. I mean, I'd have felt that pretty cold in England. Uh, um, that have been 36 degrees Fahrenheit or something. That would have been pretty cold, you know, in frost and 30, 34 degrees Fahrenheit perhaps. But 2 degrees centigrade is what's expected. So it's now a lovely day and it's uh, half past 10 in the morning. I'm going to see my friend Kavita and uh, the lawn for him. And I'm five years into being uh, on my own, which is an extraordinary experience for Marshall has been with someone nearly all his life. And, uh, well, I'm flying. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? That's so good. Hey, something else I thought of that really made this night I think I should be recording. And that was just a bit before I was recording that. Um, that I and I think all people relate to persons. You can't think of God, you can think of God as a divine force or benevolent something or other up there, but are you going to be your best relating to that imagination, to that perception, that conception that you're choosing? Are you going to be, you know, if, would it be the case that if you felt that God was a, not only a person, but goodness, if I'm a person, how much more is he? You know, and whatever the human qualities are that I seem to value, I, I think of them as divine, how much more is he then God? Of these divine qualities that make him a wonderful person. It's not, it's most reasonable, in fact, if you're going to choose to imagine God, to think of God in the way that you can love him best. You must, you must create your God, if I had to hold that possibility for a moment, in your mind according to that which you can truly love and value. Otherwise there's no way you're going to be propelled forward by your vision of the, of, of the divine. You see what I mean? Your divine has got to be something that you can, that absolutely sweeps you off your feet and you're going to give your whole life to. You're going to suspend other pleasures, other pleasures of the flesh if you like. You're going to suspend those because, suspend, I don't know, but not indulge in those simply because it might be a distraction from worshipping and loving and being devoted to it. Do you see, it won't do any... Um, uh, I may have overstated it, but I don't think I have. It's most important that it's someone you can love, that God is someone absolutely wonderful. Now you may say, well, you know, where's the reality of all this? Remember, there is no certainty. If you choose to believe he's not there, you're just as unclear. You have no way of even measuring how unclear, how uncertain you are with any conception of God. It's simply something that you do not know, and therefore the choice is yours. What you choose him to be says who you are. So, go for the best you can possibly imagine so that it does give credit and honour and, and uh, a loyal representation of what you truly are. And it will be the God that you 
you can worship and do worship and that will be what drives you forward sure you'll modify your view of God you'll know oh, I thought it would be I don't know patriotic or you know uh, whatever you know but perhaps not you know perhaps he's not the great intellectual perhaps he's the great lover perhaps he's not the great lover no he's the great something you know what wise man or whatever it is you know whatever it is though if that's what you truly utterly value in your heart that's what your God should be but if it's too mundane why settle for the mundane go for the fantastic use your imagination enter into it and love the God that is yours with all your heart, soul, mind and strength make it easy for yourself make it reliable safe for yourself the thing that will happen that you will be propelled forward by your conception your conception of the divine and that is truly who you are isn't that astonishing isn't that astonishing? Thank you, Heavenly Father. You see, it's like this. I do love my now ex-wife and whatever the demon might say through her was horrible I don't take it as of her I take it as of Satan if you like to put it in those graphic terms because I love her and if God didn't love us that way we would never come and I suppose I realize now that's how I know she will come because I love her in that way I love her through a devotion to what I know in my heart she can be and has been in fact that's the big help to me God doesn't run on have been but well I don't know perhaps he does I don't know the full picture he runs on what he knows we can be and will be in his love and care and that's the love that saves the day that saves the person that saves us and uh, you want to know what love is? Well, that's what love is. And she needed to know what love is, and she looked to me to teach her, and I'm still teaching her, and will teach her into the goodness of God. Because of the love of God in me, of course. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Love you. And thank you for Christine. Fill her, Lord. Chuck that demon out, whatever it is, however you like to think of it, Father. Let her be wonderful again. Lovely to you. And to me. Thank you, Heavenly Father.